whenever I think of creating homemade Halloween decorations, there's a couple things that always pop into my mind. And number one is a jack-o'-lantern. Carving pumpkins and lighting them. It's probably got to be up on the top of that list for Halloween decorations. But the second thing I think of is cemeteries. Creepy graveyards filled with spooky lighting, scary music, shadows from all the moving props, lots of fog, dead people. And of course, tombstones. You gotta have tombstones. And the more tombstones you have, the cooler your yard is. Way, way, way back in the day when Gina and I first got together and started decorating for Halloween, the first prop we made was a tombstone. We had just found a yard haunt not too far down the road from where we used to live, and they had a whole elaborate setup, and we were like, boy, gosh, we better get started. What do you think we should make first? Mm, let's make a tombstone. I was at work one day and I was sitting there going through all the wood piles and every time we anybody made a cut on the table saw I would always like be eyeballing to see hey is that piece of scrap wood about the size of a tombstone? I'm all hmm. And then I'd run over there and I'd grab it go put it in my little pile and then when it was my lunch break instead of eating I just started to draw out my tombstone shapes and started to cut it out. Every time my boss would come looking for me I would always be off in the corner working on those tombstones. So one of our projects for this year is we needed to make a little tiny cemetery um, photo op scene and they wanted a few tombstones and some pillars and a wall. We were like boy we better make it strong because there's going to be thousands of people like banging in and kicking it. We have made foam props for these kinds of projects before but the problem is is that they get stored in hot trailers. We actually had an issue with the telephone pole this year where the hard coat the smooth on product that we used to hard coat actually got all warped from sitting inside the hot trailer they get like 200 degrees in there I mean it was so hot in there it actually melted one of those orange construction cones so it gets hot so once Gina and I figured out a design I just did a real quick sketch up on uh, paper using a scale ruler I want to say that we used like three sheets of plywood maybe four I went ahead and went with five eighths this time just to try to make it a little bit lighter. I usually go with the thicker the better. That way I can shoot it together really easily with staples. Gina and I drew at least one side of the tombstone and then I used a skill saw or a jigsaw to cut out that one side and then we sanded the edges, set it back down on the, the sheet of plywood, traced around it and then we had our, our back side. We were going to sandwich the two pieces of plywood over 2x6, 2x4 or scrap plywood to the desired thickness of each tombstone. Now I cut the 2x4s down and then that way they'd have nice straight corners. And then we used 2x6s in any of the areas where we were going to be putting a lot of angles or maybe routing the edges. Something that just gave it that thickness. Uh, so that if we did cut any material away, it wouldn't cut through a thickness of a 2x4. Instead of leaving like a sharp corner on all these plywood edges, we decided to use a router. I have several different kind of router tips. We used a chamfer, a roundover, a cove, pattern bit or flush trim bits, just to make either cutting the plywood easier or making our own little trim pieces on this project. I had some leftover dowel that I that Gina and I had when we made our scary little haunted ticket booth that we cut the spiral on. I had little tiny sections of it left over so I just ripped one of them in half and then I stuck that on each side of that tombstone. Just an extra detail, nothing too fancy. I wanted to cut like a little triangle and what how I did this is I, I started the angle cut with the skill saw as much as I could. Then I took a sawzall with like a long blade to get the majority of it. And then I took a disc sander, went in there and kind of smoothed it up. So here's the second tombstone idea. We like the first one, drew it, and then we're gonna cut this piece out, slap it down, and we'll trace out our next piece. You'll notice on this design that there are some half circles on the edges and to create that you cut your hole first with the hole saw and then that way when you go through and you cut out your tombstone that edge is already there and you're not trying to use that hole saw to cut out a half circle because that's kind of a pain. For this one I actually just used some scrap pieces of plywood and then I just built up the thickness until I was happy with it. So then once I got those sides all done I just stapled glued it really good. I either used a, the flush trim bit with the bearing on the bottom or the flush trim or pattern bit with the bearing on the top. For the bases, I wanted to make them heavy to where it was hard for people to lift up and walk off with them or move them around. Also too, if you were gonna set these in the yard, it'd be cool to have a way to, to weight them down so that they're really heavy so that the wind don't knock them over. So to do this, I just created a little space under there. I 
made a removable door on the back, drilled some holes for some 3 8 hardware, and then I just stuck some T-nuts in the back. And a lot of times for our own hunt, we just use bags of, of play sand, but for here, we went ahead and ordered some nice professional photography sandbags, filled them up that way that they're they look cool. They're fancy sandbags. On the third design idea, I had some MDO, and uh, instead of just cutting a bunch of scrap pieces to go around the edge, I knew that I wanted a little circle piece to go on the front, so I just cut it out of a piece, and then I used that piece that I cut it out of to fill up the middle. To create all these little top pieces, I just used the very first piece that I cut out to keep tracing my line there, and then I just made it go down about an inch, cut out a piece, then I made it go down the next piece was like a half inch thick so it didn't matter if I put like screw holes and that kind of thing because it's gonna all get filled in with mud anyway but once they were all cut out and sanded then I just glued and shot it all together like the other bases it's basically made the same except for on this one I created a little bit of an angle so that it kind of had that appearance like in a creepy tombstone where the tombstones are crooked because if it's crooked it might indicate that there's maybe a a uh, ghoulish figure like from the Michael Jackson thriller video when they're all crawling out, you know, the crookedness falling over. Looks more scary. At least I think so. And once we got finished with all the tombstones, we wanted to create a texture. We didn't have to hard coat them like a, like a foam one, but we did want to create something that gave it a concrete or cement feel to it. So after the, the mud was on there, we decided that we didn't want to leave it a gray and then age it with a black typically like we've done in the past for this one since it was a photo op and the backdrops real dark and there's not a lot of lighting we thought you know what let's go ahead with a really lighter color and go more like a white marbly type of a feel to it so that it really pops in the pictures especially when you got people in in the background with like lots of colors we tried to keep it as simple as possible not a whole lot of detail no epitaphs that kind of thing we also wanted to add some green vines just to give it one more little natural element of overgrownness but we didn't want the vines to be green we wanted them to be kind of dead looking so we chose to go with a paint primer uh, plastic rust-oleum spray paint I think the color was satin espresso you can still use a Dremel to create your epitaphs you just have to do a little bit of wood at a time so like instead of a foam ones when you go like really deep like the half inch thickness you may you know just go down an eighth of an inch at a time you could actually take uh, some spray spray 77 glue a printed piece of paper just to the plywood and sit there and cut out all your letters you don't have to worry about it like coming off or falling off and then when you're all done you just take a sander and just sand the excess paper off I think the foam tombstones are definitely easier to use a Dremel on get a lot of detail uh, especially if you don't have a lot of tools to do a lot of the things that I did if you have a jigsaw and some sandpaper and some screws and a screw gun you could make some that are similar than this you may have to buy some some trim molding at the store instead of creating and making your own but there are some benefits to doing these plywood ones the the weight the strength you can um, attach props to them you can screw into them attach lights you know that kind of thing if you have some scrap plywood laying around hey it might be worth kind of playing around and doing it the cool thing is is when you wake up in the morning your tombstone may be knocked over but it's still in your yard versus some of the foam ones that we always find that are a couple houses down the neighborhood they turn into gliders they're like Whoosh. is that a is that a tombstone up there whoa i hate when that happens Tell me what you guys think. Do you think that the plywood tombstones are cool? Or are we sticking with foam? I think I still like foam tombstones better, but I will tell you guys, the one thing about these is you can beat them up and kick them around. You can shove them up in the highest little place in the garage, like eh, cram it into, eh, 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 get it in there. And you don't have to worry about it breaking. And when you pull it out the next year, you're like, oh, it just has a couple scratches on it. I'll just touch it up here. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not even going to do that. Just stick it in the yard. It's going to be dark. No one's going to see it. I don't even know why I worry about it. Nobody ever notices anyway. But I will know that scratch is there. And then I'll tell everybody by pointing to it. And they'll say, wow, that tombstone looks good. And I'll go, yeah, but there's a scratch right there. See it? A little scratch. Gosh, I wish I would have taken care of that. And then it'll bug me. I'll think about it and dwell on it. And I won't be able to sleep at night. And I'll be out there at 3 in the morning before Halloween out there touching it up. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.